What is going on? This is Cody, and you are tuned to B-Boy 45, broadcasting from the Seacrest Studios. It is another special edition of the latest news to keep you in the groove with Maya. Maya, why is this edition so special? Because Kumail Nanjiani is calling in. Camille, are you there? I am here. Hi. He- hello, how are you? I'm great. Well, welcome. Maya, take it away, girl. Okay, so um, first of all, I'm so excited to be talking to you right now. I'm such a fan of yours, and my whole family is, um, are, we're all big fans of yours, so um, I'm just so excited. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for, you and your family have great kids. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so my first question for you is who or what inspired you to start acting? Oh, um, so I came to acting pretty late. I first started doing stand-up, just stand-up comedy on stage, and acting wasn't really part of the plan. And then later I sort of started writing for TV shows, and still acting wasn't part of the plan. So I kind of just fell into it because one of the shows I wrote for they wanted the writers to play like little parts. Um, and so that's how that happened. But I would say if I'm going to look back and see the actors who I was a big fan of um, when I was a kid, I would say it would be probably Bill Murray or Robin Williams. Those were the guys that I really loved growing up. And now when I look back, um, I think those are the guys who initially inspired me to become a fan of comedy. Oh, cool. Um, so you've guest starred in so many different, um, shows, including Veep, Portlandia, The Grinder, and Community. Um, have you had a favorite project that you've, or a show that you've guest starred in? Wow. I love all those shows. I love all those shows. I would say doing Portlandia, and that was sort of the first show that I did where, where you know people watched me and I got to do that show uh, many times over the years every season I would do one or two episodes but I would say Portlandia is a special place in my heart just because I'm a fan of Fred and Terry and, and um, I, I, I just sort of that was the show that people watched and it changed my life really and I would say uh, another show that I really love doing that I really miss is Adventure Time. I played a character uh, on it called Prismo, and that was probably one of my favorite characters I've ever gotten to play. I just love his design, the way he looks, and I really miss that show. Oh, cool. Um, so you hosted the Comedy Central show, um, The Meltdown with Jonah and Kumail. Um, what draws you to stand-up comedy? I love with stand-up comedy how immediate it is. I love that you hear, you know, the audience laughing right away. Um, you know, if you're acting in a movie or a TV show, you sort of work on it for weeks or months, and then much later, you know, it comes out, and you're never really, I guess with the movie and the premiere, sometimes you're with the audience, but usually... It just sort of goes out there. You, you're not really, like, getting that reaction immediately. With stand-up, you can write something in the morning, go out at night, and perform it. Not these days, because, you know, everyone's sort of, well, I'm, I'm in my house. Uh, but usually you can, you can write it in the morning, go perform it at night, and just get that feedback immediately. You can see immediately if the joke is funny or if it's not funny, if people like it and laugh or if they look at you. If they look at you funny, so so that's what's exciting to me about stand up is you know it's just it's just the 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 rush of it it's it's really exciting. Oh, cool. Um, so do you have a favorite comedian? Wow, there's a lot of there are a lot of comedians that I really love. I mean, I would say starting off, my favorite was probably Jerry Seinfeld, um, and Zach Galifianakis was another comedian that I really really liked. Uh, I would say that those are the guys that um, that really inspired me to do stand up right at the beginning. Oh, cool! Um, so you also create and host podcasts, and you and your wife started the podcast "Staying In" with 
Emily and Kumail during quarantine. Um, what inspired you to start this podcast? Well, mostly it was suddenly, you know, both of us were obviously stuck at home. And my wife specifically uh, has a condition that puts her in a high-risk group for this specific virus. And so we, we, we knew we'd have to be very, very strict. My wife, Emily, was also, she's a writer now, but she used to be a therapist for a long time. And so we figured, well, we're stuck at home. We can't really do anything. She actually uh, has a lot of tips on how people can cope with a situation like this. You know, I mean, we haven't ever had a situation where so many people pretty much, you know, entire cities, entire countries are sort of having to stay inside. And that can be difficult for a lot of people. And so we decided, well, I think it would be an interesting thing to do because she just has a lot of great, like, coping strategies, you know. And so what we do on the podcast is she'll, she'll talk about, like, how to avoid cabin fever, how to keep, uh, for, you know, how to keep sort of uh, normal and, and keep your anxiety low and not freak out too much when, when the world is sort of in such a strange place. But then we also give advice on what we just give tips on movies to watch and TV shows to watch and video games to play because we, we really love that stuff. So that's kind of why we did that. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, my <laughs> my mom has talked to me a lot about anxiety because I've been freaking out a lot during these um, past couple months. So we've had to like talk <laughs> about that like at least once a day. So... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, don't don't be too hard on yourself. I have the same thing. I don't talk to my mom, but I'll be honest, I think my mom is actually more anxious than me, but I talk to my wife every day. She's the one who 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 sort of occupies that role in my life. <laughs> um, so uh you starred in the show Silicon Valley alongside Thomas Middleditch who I actually just interviewed a couple weeks ago. Um, what was the best part of being on that show? Well, here's the thing you probably don't know. Thomas and I started comedy back in Chicago together back in, wow, okay. This is gonna sound, this is gonna make me sound really, really old, but I think it might've been back in 2003, 2004. So we met in Chicago, we became friends because we started playing video games together. Uh, so I've known, uh, I've known Thomas for that long. So I would say my favorite part of doing Silicon Valley was sort of getting to make a really funny show with my friends. I mean, Thomas and I started comedy together, we, we came up together, and then ended up doing a show together for, for six years. It, you know, it was one of those jobs that didn't feel like a job, even though the hours are pretty long. We'd be there 14, 15 hours a day, sometimes every day. But but really, it was just, we just laughed a lot. We goofed around a lot. We made fun of each other. We made fun of ourselves. So, so I would say the best part of it was getting to, like, spend so much time with my friends. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, uh, my family and I have been binge-watching um, so many shows during quarantine and Silicon Valley is on our list because my mom has seen it and my sister and I have seen a couple episodes but we haven't seen the whole series so we're going to we're planning on binge watching that well I hope you I hope you like it what other shows are you binge watching oh um we're binge watching Frasier Wow, going way back. <laughs> yeah, and um, I don't know. We've like w we've watched so many shows. I've lost track of all of them. So <laughs> I know I'm the same way. People are like, "What have you watched?" I'm like, "I don't know." I feel like I've been in quarantine for five years. <laughs> when I try and think of you know shows that I watched uh, in the beginning of quarantine, it feels like it was something that I watched ten years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I have to say, though, quarantine, like, one good thing uh, about it is it, like, made me um, 
it helped me discover one of my favorite shows. So that's why I, that's like a good part of quarantine. <laughs> Is it Frasier? Well, yes, Frasier, but also um, The New Adventures of Old Christine. Wow, wow. Okay, I haven't seen that show. She's, um, I know, the, she's a Louis So, um, you've been in so many movies and TV shows, um, and of all the characters you've played other than yourself in The Big Sick, um, which character have you uh, related to the most? Uh, you mean from characters I've played or, or characters who other actors have played and the stuff I've done? Um, characters you've played. I would say, you know, this movie is not out yet, but um, I did a movie called The Eternal that I finished earlier this year. It was supposed to come out in November, but now it's been delayed to February because of uh, quarantine. A movie called The Eternals, and I play a character named Kingo, and he's a... Uh, He's a superhero who's also a Bollywood actor. Um, I would say that that character, after the big sick, is probably the favorite cat, my favorite character I've played, just because he's, um, I just think he's really fun and, and he dances and uh, he's, uh, he's very sarcastic, but he's also, you know, he's, he's also like, he's very sincere and, you know, he has superpowers. <laughs> so I would say Kingo and the Eternal. Uh, that's my favorite character I've gotten to play. I hope that movie, you know, I hope I hope that movie comes out soon because uh, I, I think that movie's going to be really fun. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, I know my sister and I are really excited to see it, so. Um, it was really, really fun to shoot. We shot it in London for five months or so, and... Uh, I think I think it's going to be, yeah, I don't want to jinx it, so I hope you like it when it comes out. <laughs> um, yeah, we're really excited to see it. Um, so you recently starred with Issa Rae in The Lovebirds, um, and I love that movie. Um, were there scenes that you had to do multiple takes of because it was hard not to crack up? Oh, I would say almost every scene. I think Issa is so, so, so funny. Um, we had such a fun time making that movie. And I think, you know, there, there are actually, there's a scene right after the big accident happens when we're in the diner where I, I laugh so much and we run out of time that when you watch the movie, I can see parts where I'm trying not to laugh. Like, it, it's in the movie because there just weren't any other takes. Uh, so yeah, we laughed. We laughed a lot in that movie, especially you know if you notice that movie is mostly set at night, which means we obviously shot it at night. So sometimes you'd be shooting at three in the morning, four in the morning, and you just get a little, you just get a little loopy, you know, because you're tired. And I get stuck in that mode sometimes. It happens, you know, where you like start laughing, and then you just can't stop laughing. Like there's just nothing you can do. It's completely out of Role, especially when you're sleep deprived like that. So, so I certainly felt pretty guilty doing that movie because I wasted everyone's time quite a bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I have to say, one of my like, favorite scenes from that movie is when you and Issa Rae are like, I don't remember, um, sorry, I'm like blanking on everything right now. So I don't remember what you were doing, but you were trying to go into this store that was um, locked and she right. um, yeah. tries to open the door and she's like, oh, it's locked. And then you try to open it and then she just looks at you and says, what did you think it was one of those men only doors? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That line, I just, I was crying. I was laughing so hard. Yeah, and you know, Issa just, was just, it's just so funny. And I love her just so much. She's just such a great, 
smart person. We're, we're, we're hoping we get to do, you know, I'm hoping I get to do another movie with her. So, so hopefully you'll get to see us together again at some point. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so what inspired you and your wife, Emily, to write your story in The Big Sick? Well, you know, so Emily had gotten sick a while ago, um, and and it was a very traumatic experience for us. And then a few years had gone by, and I was like, well, that was a very interesting thing that happened to us. It's so specific. I don't think it's happened to anybody else. And I knew it was such a big part of, of our story, and specifically my story. I knew that so much of it was stuff that I hadn't dealt with, you know, it was one of those things that whenever I would think about it, I would get really scared. And for me, writing is a great way. It's sort of like therapy, you know, sort of like you talking to your mom when you have anxiety or me talking to Emily when I have anxiety. It helps me to write about something to sort of, to sort of get past it, to like uh, move on from it. And so I figured, well, this is an interesting story, I think. Nobody else has it. I think it could be an interesting movie, and it will also help me make sense of this traumatic event that had happened that, that I hadn't yet been able to make sense of. So, so that's kind of why we we decided to write that movie. Oh, cool! Um, yeah, I I love that movie. Um, and so I was wondering, how did it feel to get so much acclaim for such a personal story? Oh, it was it was interesting. First of all, it was obviously fantastic. You know, it's such a great. We, we really poured ourselves into that movie. We poured our heart into that movie, and and the fact that it was well received really, really meant a lot to us. But it's also a little strange because suddenly a very personal story, something that only her and me and and our families do, suddenly a lot more people know about. You know. So in a way, it goes from being your story to a story that sort of belongs to the world, and that certainly required a little bit of adjustment. Uh, but overall, I mean, it was it was just such a wonderful year when that movie came out. We got to sort of travel all over the world promoting it. Uh, we promoted that movie for a whole year, basically, and uh, we got to go to Australia and London. And it just was it was really fun. I, I think back on that year quite fondly. Oh, cool. Um, so, was it challenging to work together on the project? Yeah, so we really had to figure out rules for how to work together. You know, you mentioned um, that stand-up comedy show that I hosted, Meltdown with uh, Jonah and Mel. Emily produced that show. And so we'd worked together before, but we'd never written together before. Um, and obviously we're married and we live together. So sometimes what can happen is suddenly work becomes just something you can do all day. You know, like if, I, if I'm working with someone else and they're just a coworker, at the end of the day, I go home and they go home. But here, we live together. So, so there's, a, there's a world where you're suddenly like just working all the time. So, so it was challenging and we kind of had to set like rules for ourselves to make sure that, you know, we still... Why, even though we were sort of work partners, we were also still, you know, romantic partners. We were still in a marriage, too. So, yeah, yeah. It, it was challenging, but I think we've gotten a, a good system going now. Um, yeah, so uh, you had mentioned uh, the, um, that you're in the upcoming movie, The Eternals. Um, which is a Marvel Universe um, movie. And I was wondering, how does it feel to be part of this iconic movie universe? Oh, it feels amazing. It feels amazing. It's kind of weird that it's not, it doesn't feel real yet since the movie hasn't come out. And, um, you know, it's, it's, once it comes out, it'll be real and people will believe it. I feel like still right now people don't believe it completely <laughs> because there's been no trailers there's really nothing so but it feels amazing you know I've been such a fan of Marvel movies from the very beginning in fact Emily and I just watched the first the first one Iron Man 
uh, again recently, day before yesterday, and I've seen all those movies multiple times. And it really was a goal of mine to to end up in a Marvel movie. I really, really, really wanted to be in a Marvel movie. I love all of them. It feels really surreal. It feels really surreal. I think it'll sink in once the movie comes out. But right now, I'm like, uh, is it real? I don't know yet. I'll know once the credits are, are rolling. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, so, have you discovered any new hobbies or talents during quarantine? Um, I have learned how to roll a burrito. That's been the big <laughs> skill. I have, I have figured out. Because, you know, I, you, you get a burrito and it's like so well rolled, and you're like, I don't know how to do it. Do they use fill or something? They don't. They don't use glue. They just like fold it a certain way. So I was like, "All right, I'm gonna figure out how to how to roll a burrito." And now I pretty much eat burritos every day. I also got really good at making pancakes. I could always make pancakes, but now I can make them like completely circular. You know, they were always a little bit. The shape was always a little bit wobbly. Uh, but I would say right now my burritos are rolled tight. I can eat them; they don't fall apart. And my my pancakes look like perfectly shaped discs. So so that's what I've learned in quarantine. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, uh, yeah, I've been trying to find all these different things to distract me. So I've been looking for like new hobbies and stuff. So maybe I'll try to learn how to roll a burrito. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, I'll tell you, it, it's not, rolling a burrito, the hardest part is getting the right amount of filling in there, because if you put in too much, it's going to break apart. If you don't put in enough, then it just looks kind of lame, you know, it just looks like a little cigar, not a burrito. So that's my advice to you. Figure out the right amount of filling. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because I've tried before, and it always ends up looking like a taco, or like it just yeah. comes apart all together. So, um, so, <laughs> um, so what do you do to um, put a smile on your face when you're having a bad day? That's a very, very, very good question. Um, you know, I find sometimes my big problem is I, I'm on my phone too much, I'm on Twitter too much, I'm on Instagram too much. And sometimes when I'm just sort of scrolling and looking at the news and just sort of like engrossed in my phone, that's when my anxiety gets really bad. That's when I sort of start feeling bad. So honestly, for me, the best thing I know that I can do for myself is just go and sit away from my phone and look out a window for a while. I know that sounds very boring, but I think that for me, uh, that sort of quiets my mind sometimes. That's what gets me feeling like normal and like myself again. Um, and if that doesn't work, I eat a banana. I love bananas. <laughs> that's that's a good way, a good thing as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, what is your biggest pet peeve? Wow, what is my biggest pet peeve? That's a good question. Okay, let me think, let me think. Um, I would say my biggest pet peeve is when people text you and if you don't text them back immediately when they get upset. It's like, that's the point of texting. The point of texting is you text someone and then I can text you back a little bit later. If you really wanted a response, give me call me on the phone. Actually, don't call me on the phone. When my phone rings, I, I, I <laughs> that's always terrifying to me. Uh, that was, that's my biggest pet peeve, is like when I, when I text someone, or like, you know, when you text someone back and then you see the three dots and then the dots disappear, and it's like, wait, you were texting me back and then you decided not to. So I guess I'm on both sides here. <laughs> Depends what you need, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, as a writer, is there a film or book that's had a big impact on you? Um, I would 
say the movie that I, it's an old movie called Casablanca that I really, really love. And the reason I love that movie is because it has sort of everything. It has drama, it has action, it has comedy, it has romance. You know, sometimes when you're writing, you're sort of, sometimes I, I'm like, get to like, oh, this movie has to be funny or it has to have romance or whatever it is. That movie showed me that a movie can have everything. You know, you can have every emotion, you can have every kind of feeling um, in the movie. So that's, that, that's sort of the movie I think about a lot when I'm writing, where it's like, I want to put every emotion I can into a movie. Uh, because if Casablanca can do it, well, that's like the best movie of all time. So it's an unpleasant <laughs> comparison, but yeah, that movie right inside me. Oh, cool. So what terrible movie do you secretly love? Oh, what ter- you know, I really like horror movies. I really like bad horror movies. I can't think of a specific name right now because I just, it, for, since I was a little kid, you know, there were like, I remember there was a movie, but I saw it, you know, uh, while my parents were away, they were like somewhere else, and I secretly watched this movie, and it scared me so much. Like people are trapped in the house, and then there's a monster, and it scared me so much, and I think about that movie all the time. Or, basically, any horror movie. I can watch any horror movie. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll I'll admit, like I I cannot watch horror movies because I either don't sleep or when I do sleep I have nightmares. Um, and so I can't watch. My sister likes horror movies. I can't watch them. I I can like I can handle thrillers, but horror movies just. I don't know. I'll just like break out crying sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you should watch them. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. My sister and I have tried to watch them together a couple times, and I get so freaked out. I'm like, no, I'm done with this. I'm going upstairs. <laughs> 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 Is there a show that you're currently binge watching? Yeah, I I just started watching a show called Doom Patrol. It's uh, it's a superhero show about these superheroes who are like kind of losers. They're like not um, they're not really that powerful. They they don't really get along. They're just kind of like goofy. And I'm only three or four episodes in, but I, but I like it a lot. They can't really like control their powers really well. They don't understand their own powers. So, so I think it's interesting because usually you see these superheroes and they're so good at fighting crime because they like know how to use their powers. And these guys just can't figure it out. Oh, oh cool. Um, yeah, I'll have to um, add that to um, my list of shows to watch. So... Um, it's a weird show. Just be prepared. It is a weird show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for warning me. Um, <laughs> um, so what is your favorite podcast? What is my favorite podcast? You know, uh, here, let me look at my podcast list right now. It, it sort of changes. Actually, there's a podcast called Radio Lab that I listen to a lot. It's sort of a science podcast. It's... um. We talk about a lot of different sort of science stuff. Uh, so I would say Radio Lab. I really like Radio Lab. Oh, cool. Um, so if you could have any song um, playing to announce your entrance into a room, what song would it be? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, this is going to sound like I'm lying, but I really still listen to the Frozen soundtrack a lot. Um, so, <laughs> I would say something from the Frozen soundtrack, probably. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, I... No, I, I like that soundtrack. And I actually... There's one song from Frozen 2 that I've had... It's been one of the songs that's just been on repeat for quarantine like the entire quarantine 
Um, and that's uh, oh, cool. Yeah, um, it's Lost in the Woods, um, and yeah, that just that whole scene, like we could not stop laughing when um, that song came on. Um, so uh, I haven't my, seen Frozen Two yet. I should add that to my list. Yeah, it, it's really good. <laughs> And the song is called Lost in the Woods, and it's so funny. <laughs> um, I will look for it. <laughs> um, so, um, my last question for you is, who do you consider to be a real-life superhero, and why? Oh, my God. Well, I think what you're doing is great. You're, you're doing interviews and you're broadcasting them to the, the, the hospital. So I, I would say a real-life superhero. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's very sweet. Yeah. Um, well, I, yeah, I was going to say you're one of mine, so... Oh, great. We're each other superheroes. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for calling in. I just, I still can't believe this is happening. I just had the best time talking to you. Oh, thank you, Maya. It was very, very nice talking to you. Please say hi to your mom and your sister for me, okay? I will. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks for spending so much time with us here at Children's Hospital Colorado and the Seacrest Studio. We appreciate it. You have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.